Hello, welcome to Ekidel. We are train future civil and structural engineer. My name is Justice Omoka and I am your instructor. Today, I will be teaching you about load reduction in high-rise building design. So basically, when you're designing a high-rise building and all that, knowing that high-rise building is affected by so many external loads. First, it's on its own self weight then it will be affected by wind load and if the structure is in a seismic region or earthquake region it will also be affected by seismic load and all that or earthquake effects so knowing this now you can see that you have several loads to um, deal with and also the life load and in a high-rise building it is a normal culture to um, apply life load reduction. Now, when it comes to life load reduction, there are several ways which you can or methods that are used for life load reduction. But the best way is the percentage method, which I'll be showing you um, on this video. Now, this this structure here. Is located in India Delhi and it is affected by seismic load and based on its location we are using the Indian code for the design now if I navigate now to the design code which is used on the structure you will see that it is all Indian code okay that's fine so starting from the concrete design the steel design and everything here we are dealing with what is which is what indian code okay so based on this structure if you're able to model your structure and all that the next thing right now to do for a high-rise building is to now begin to look out for a way to how to reduce your life load now there are several cultures people use to reduce life load for high-rise building one of the culture is to use lightweight partition walls on the intermediate um, walls inside the structure by using either wood, uh, either, either, either by using polystyrene material or by using wood. That's for the internal partitions. Now, another way again, most clients don't like it. Now, another way again for you to um, reduce life load re um, or, 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 or to reduce the weight on the structure when it comes to high-rise building is to use different type of slab knowing that what you're seeing right now is a solid slab as you can see that now there are different type of slab for example rib slab there are there are rib slabs that in between those openings you are to use a lightweight polystyrene material also there are two way rib which is what waffle slabs now in between those 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 hollow pots you are to use a polystyrene material which is very very lightweight now by the cost of this when you have done all this you you will see that it will be able to reduce the weight of the structure now based on how rib slab and waffle slab construction is a bit difficult and most engineers don't have the idea so that most times they choose to go with what solid slab which is more easier in construction as they think now based on analytical aspects the percentage method of light flood re reduction is what i'll be showing you today so once you're done modeling your your building and you're sure that all your modeling is okay you have done your building model check and everything is okay now one of the tricks to avoid errors when you're modeling for high-rise building or building that are very very complex is one each story that you model try to run a building model check so that if at all there is any error it will be you you will see the error on the story one and you'll be able to detect that error and correct the error right on the story one don't wait till you have modeled all the stories before you can now go and perform building model check 
because if there is an error on story one, and most at times high rise buildings are always typical. Maybe on the last floor you cannot be able to see what changes. So if there is an error on the story one, and then you use that error to then load your number of stories, you will see that by the time you run the, the BD model check, you will have the same error all over the story. And at this point, it might be difficult for you to uh, to correct. It will take some time for you to correct all of them because now you don't have them what as many as in different stories. So when you model any story that is not the same with the other story, try to run BD model check. And if there's any error on that new story, you correct it before you now move to the next. In that way, you will see that you will have a seamless, error-free structural model. Now, you are done performing your structural model now. The next thing now is now what? How do you now reduce the life load of your structure? Now, we are going to use the percentage method. Now, when, once you're done modeling this now, the next thing to do is now go to for it now apply the life load reduction perfectly, you have to come to what? Um, story uh, building set out, all right? Then come to stories here, then come to story operation, and then you will see edit story. Now, we are using the software put at 25 and that. But if I thought you were using in another fashion too, you will still have this option here. So on this now, as you can see, we are then going to, you, you can see that on this place that says um, impose life load, I have already applied, as you can see it here, it's showing 40%. But if you go down to the last floor, you will see that the percentage increased. You can see on the upper floor, it is zero, zero, zero. And on this floor, which is this um, 54 story here, you can see there that it's showing what? 12%, um, okay? That's fine. So basically, I'll, to, I'll, I'll just come and do what? Reset here first. Now, this is how it will appear on your own. When you have just modeled your story and you have not applied imposed load reduction or life load reduction, you will see this section here that says imposed load reduction, they will all be showing as for zero. That's because you have not applied the load reduction. Now, do not apply the load reduction knowing that once your building is more than 10 story building, because high rise building starts from 10 story building. So once your building is up to 10 story building and, and, and above, you are meant to, it is advisable to apply life load reduction one by what? Percentage methods two, you are meant to find if or figure out a way to begin to reduce your life load of the structure or to reduce the load of the structure, the or the weight of the structure. For example, you can be using partition walls instead of block walls on the internal partition of the building. Okay, that's fine. So, with this now, I'll then come now to you know, once I click on apply here, you can see it here impose load reduction. If I click on apply here, you see that they will be applied on this place. You will be seeing here showing by what percentage. So I'll come now and I click on what apply. Right? And then come here. You can, you can see that they are giving you what what kind of structure is this? Basically, this building here is a residential building. Yeah. Most of the times in all these western countries and all that, they have high-rise building for only for residential purposes. I know that and knowing that Indian is highly populated, I think one of the I think the second largest um, country in the world based on what population. So this you you will see that housing is a very uh, important need in this country. So investors are building high-rise um, structures for just for what residential purposes. So in this case now, this building is a residential building. So I'll I'll come here and choose what residential building. But in your own case. If you're designing for offices, you have to come and choose offices. Now you can see that what we have here is just um, residential office and what and manufacturing plant and malls. These malls here are for shopping malls, Shop, shopping malls like all these big shopping malls, right? Not not plazas, not all these smaller shops, but shopping malls. Now if you're designing for like schools, school building, classroom, you can choose office here, right? Don't choose residential. Okay, that's fine. Then if you're designing for like um, assembling area 
conference hall, no all that. You can choose this here. So right now we are designing for what residential building. So I'll come now and then choose here that say what residential buildings. So on this, you can now see that it has that do not applied uh, life load words reduction by percentage. So it has reduced the life load to now what this is what 40 percent, 40 percent. Now as as you're going higher, you see your load you uh, reducing by percentage. So you can see that from from the 51 story here you can see that it is what it is 50, um, 35 percent and so on until when it gets to this other story it becomes five and then becomes what zero okay that's fine now this is what done automatically because there are, there are formulas that are used on this formulas and principle used on life load reduction by percentage so with this now once i've done this now i'll then come here and then do what i um, say okay automatically right now we have just applied life load reduction on this structure give it some time for it to um load up, okay for it to load okay that's fine let's just hold on for it to um load that life load uh, or apply the life load reduction on the structure on each of these stories okay that's fine now you will see this this um, message that says what in post load reduction factor modified okay that's fine do you want to save just yes because it was zero before now we have not applied what um life load reduction so just say yes save okay that's fine so on this now it has then it has done what applied the life load reduction as you can see right now it's not trying to do what save now the next now i'll be we will we, we'll be moving on is the seismic loading okay that's fine seismic loading so different countries different design code has their own seismic loading for example you could use this what you um, use what you could aid um aci code uses what ibc code or ubc but ibc is the best to be used for uh, american code when it comes to what seismic design okay that's fine so right now this building is designed is is is, is to be built in delhi Indian. So right now, we we'll now come here to now apply seismic loading. You come to this once it's done saving. Come to, to this place here. Is this saving? Is this saving? Okay. Now you can now see that you come to this place here. Basically, naturally, this place here is always what at default like this. So once you want to apply seismic load on your structure, you then come here and then activate it first. Now, once you activate it now, you have to come and choose what does you want to use what you want to use seismic code on this structure. So now you have to come and choose what choose your your uh, code. In this case, this this structure is to be built in Indian, and we are using what Indian code for this design. And Indian has their own seismic code here. So I'll come here and then choose um, Indian code here. I'll say what um, pick. Now, on this now, I have picked the code for my seismic, okay? That for my earthquake, earthquake code, I will then come here and then to what say OK. Now, on saying OK, you have not applied the earthquake load on this structure. No, what you have what just done is that you have just said that you want to use earthquake load or that has load loaded on this structure. Now, for it to now apply seismic load and parameters, you have to go and uh, um, Put in the parameters and choose your type of what your type of soil your ground type and everything and to do that you have to come to this place that says what loading here and then you will see the seismic parameters what activated i'll then come and then click on this place here now on 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 once you click that place now you have to hold on for it to display the seismic parameters interface based on what the indian code we are using on this structure so right now you can see that they have several um inputs here based be, uh, starting from what parameters and uh, um, analysis structural what reality and set okay that's fine now this place here is if you're having a setback on your structure now basically there are some principles that deal with what setbacks and most of the times when you are designing for seismic structures it is not advisable for you to have setback on your structure it is best your building is what regular beginning from the lowest story 
down to the last floor. It is best you have that. But if at all you cannot avoid that and you're going to have setbacks on your structure as you go, uh, as you approach upper to the upper floors, then there are principles to calculate for the setbacks, which is 30%. They, they have different percentage of setbacks based on the length you are meant to go based on each of the setback shapes. If you are having setback on only one side, it has its own principles. And if you are having setback on both sides as the building goes, it also has its own principles. So you must follow that principles if you don't want to have your, if your building or your structure is not regular. But it is advisable you have a regular structure from then down to the last floor. Because having setbacks on your structure will cause a weaker story or will cause weaker joints when there's an earthquake. So, but if you're able to follow the principle of percentage on setbacks, then you can be able to um, 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 go go across that. So, although sense design basically takes time, I know that, but I'll be using, I'll be doing a new video or a different video for just sense loading, okay, and the principles on how to load that. And I'll be using um, three codes, three, three different codes. I'll do one for what you could eight, which I which I love best, and then I'll do for what IBC code, which is what the US code. And then we will now move to the Indian code, okay? And that's all. That's the that's the three codes I use: BS code, Euro code, um, Indian code, and American code, okay? That's the one I use. So with this now, um, the, the this video is just for the um, life load reduction, which I've shown you how to apply life load reduction. On your structure majorly when you have a very massive structure or when your building is a high-rise building and higher building begins from what from 10 story and above okay that's fine okay so on my on, on the next video about this structure I'll be showing you about seismic loading okay and all that okay that's fine so with this now I'll see you on the next video bye for now now before you go please I would like you to give this video a thumbs up, like this video, please like the video, and also if you're new on Ekidel, consider subscribing because the more you subscribe, the more um, we go viral more on YouTube and the more we reach to other younger engineers. Knowing that our mission is to help grow the younger engineers around the world, that's fine. And also, if you want to join, if you want to have one-on-one -on -one training with Ekidel, I would advise you join the Ekidel mentorship training which runs for six weeks and after the six weeks there will be a test and then you'll be given a certificate of competency at the end of your training. That's fine. So you can book or enroll for Ekidel one-on-one -on -one mentorship training for um, in what? Structural design and also we have also began Ekidel one-on-one -on -one training in structural detailing. We started last month for that. That's fine. So see you again on the next part of this video. Bye for now then.